so hi, uh, welcome to Singa Cup 2020. So uh, it's an, indeed a great privilege. Uh, this time we have got uh, Coach Chan Yue Ting from Hong Kong. So in fact, it's probably one of our most, uh, most uh, one of the most talented, amazing female coach around right now in Hong Kong, especially. So uh, coach, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for the invitation. Yeah, yeah. nice to meet you all extremely privileged so coach i'll be doing a quick uh, interview with you so hopefully i'm definitely more than excited to hear your insightful story uh, oh, okay then yeah. after after our uh, interview so i will slowly gradually also uh invite uh, some of our panelists to join us as well they do have uh, some questions to seek your advice as well so uh, the first one will be uh, miss Adel adelina gomez mm -hmm. so uh adelina is actually head coach of the girls program uh, at anza in singapore mm -hmm. Okay. And the second will be um, Miss Jasma Habit. So Jasma mm -hmm. is actually uh, one of the players from uh, Aya Raja Grafon FC. Mm -hmm. as well. okay. And the last third one will be uh, Danelle Tan. This young lady is actually a Lion City Steelers FC uh, and a Singapore women's player. Okay, looking forward. Yeah, yeah, sure. So, okay, so let me fire off the very first question right now. So, Coach, um, okay, for you, in this instance, it's like, um, was it true that your parents uh, would love to be involved in a more, would, would like you to be involved in a more uh, family activity rather than uh, a sports like football? So, how how you actually overcome yeah. that? Yeah, uh, so I don't know the culture in Singapore. Is this a big difference? Mm. Uh, from Hong Kong, right? So, you know, like uh, traditional Chinese, uh, they think girls, they should go dance or draw something, piano, yeah. right? But uh, yeah, so at the beginning, they don't like that um, I'm in the football field. Yeah, so first reason, I believe it's uh, because of the culture. Yeah, mm -hmm. secondly, I think, um, because nowadays in Hong Kong, the football is not developing very well. So they don't think that I can get a good pathway or mm -hmm. career or future career in path. football. Yeah, because um, I had quite good <laughs> academic result when I was a student. So they have mm -hmm. a very high expectation on me. But mm -hmm. uh, after the graduation from the university, I chose to work in a professional football club as a data analysis. So that's why they were quite disappointed and they were quite angry. Oh. Actually, yeah, we had few arguments, <laughs> yeah, with my dad, especially, yeah. But um, I'm luckily that uh, I think it's luckily. Um, after a few years, they suddenly change a bit their mind, so they come to watch um the football games in Hong Kong, mm. and then I oh. think that they saw that I'm happy, and they can see that uh I'm learning a lot. So that's why they think um oh, it may be a good job for her. And they yeah become more support and um, agree with what I'm doing yeah yeah so out of curiosity I mean as in I I know that uh, I mean probably they want you more in a uh, dancing instead of uh, football <laughs> but during which phase of life or which period of time that you actually you have decided that football is yeah. the thing that you will go yeah um so when I was thirteen years old mm. I start watching football. Just because of David Beckham is too handsome. David Beckham, yeah, okay. yeah. So I watch all the games of the Manchester United and also the England mm. team, Premier League, something like this. And then I was thinking, ah, oh, maybe I can try to play football. But uh, mm. unluckily, that uh, my mother reject. Yeah. So I actually uh, put her signature on the application form when I oh. was 15 years old. Yeah, it's not good, so don't learn from me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, I started playing football when I was 15 years old. Actually, it's, mm. it's quite late, yeah, as a, as, a, yeah, as a beginner. Yeah, and then uh, after the graduation of university, at the moment, I was coaching some uh, primary school just to get uh, some uh, money for living as a student, university student, and, um, the head coach of one of the professional football team in Hong Kong invited me that uh, to help him uh, and learn to be a data analysis mm. for the for the club. So I start my career there. Yeah. Ah, I see. Okay. So being the first female football coach to ever <laughs> coach a men's team and to yeah. win the top flight championship in yeah. recent in two zero one six. So would you be able to tell us more about that? 
Yeah, um, I always said that I'm a very lucky as a coach in my football life. Mm. Um, I remember that um, I started being an assistant coach well, around maybe 2013 when mm. I moved to the um, Southern Football Club and then Sun Pegasus Football Club. And then uh, when the club finished again and I moved to the new club, uh, it is Eastern. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So uh, at the beginning, I was I was just uh, assistant coach in the club, and then in the December of 2015, the head coach get another offer from China. Yeah. So he decided to leave, and uh, at the moment, the boss uh, have to find someone to be the next head coach, and uh, he want to pick someone from the from our coaches team. Yeah. And he considered that I have got the A license already mm. from AFC. So he appointed me as a new head coach. So be honest that I was very nervous mm -hmm. and very stressful because uh, Eastern is not a small club in Hong Kong. Uh, they, and then mm -hmm. they aim to get the champion every year. So um, everyone is watching me and, you know, as a woman coach and especially quite young, so I draw quite a lot of attention from the media and the public and also a lot of uh, positive or negative criticize something like this yeah but um i think i'm quite lucky that uh once i start being a head coach i got uh eight games yeah straight victory win yeah we win all the games so i get more confidence and especially um we win the senior shield championship yeah so yeah the team trust me and uh, uh all of my coaches help me a lot and uh i really appreciate that uh, even I'm a woman head coach, but the uh, players, they stay very professional. Yeah, they just uh, do their best, do their job. So that's why we have a very strong team spirit and it brings mm. us a big champion at the year. Ah, okay. <clears throat> so that's successful seasons in 2016. So, okay, yeah, we also yeah. see you winning the AFC Women's Coach of the Year Award. Yeah, yeah. Not only that, not only that, and you also featured as one of the most influential, uh, one of the most influential women in two zero one six, a BBC top hundred women's documentary. So, yeah. how did all <laughs> this recognition meant to you? Um, uh, be honest, I take all the award like uh, for the team. It's not only for myself. You know, uh, being a coach as a football coach, uh. The people say you are good because you win the game, right? So the players mm -hmm. did well. But the people say that uh, you are bad because you lose the game. Mm -hmm. So all about the results. The results always come first. So that's why I think the recognition is for the team, for the Eastern Football Club, not only for myself. Yeah, and what I think is the most meaningful award for me is the lead champion. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. not about the personal award like the BBC or the, the best coach of the year, something like this. Um, yeah, because I think it is all the effort from the team, from the club, and they trust me. That's why I have got a chance to be a head coach and I've got a chance to get all the award. Yeah, so it's really, yeah, uh, thankful for them. And I think um, my story is quite inspired for the other girls or women as well. So yes. that's why I think uh, even I don't think it is uh, uh, very, I, I'm very good or I'm a very strong woman, but I hope that my st story can influence the others, like some women to um, chase their dream or mm. uh, always think back and try to believe in themselves. Yeah, um, I believe that a lot of women can be a very good role model in society. Mm, definitely, yeah. definitely. Yeah. So I mean, because of your achievement in Hong Kong, okay, mm -hmm. you have uh, you were attracting so much attention, especially with your <laughs> yeah. appointments at Eastern internationally. I mean, as in, like, how did you cope with all this pressure during this period of time, that period of time? Yeah, I think it is very very good question because how to deal with the pressure is really a big part of a coach. Yeah, because mm. we always, you know, even we do our best, but we can be fried because uh, the team lose the games or some of the players, they, they are not playing well, something like this. So um, what I think is uh, every job actually comes with the good or bad. 
So once you accept to be a head coach, you have to know that uh, you're going to have a lot of stress and uh, a lot of criticize from the prospect or from the fans. Even uh, even the team is winning or leading, still have a lot of comment from the others. So I just take it as one of a part of uh, my job, and it's like uh, my responsibility to cope with this uh, pressure. Because if I cannot um, keep my uh, keep my emotion well, I will influence my players and the other mm. staff as well. So as a head coach, I have to always stay very calm. Yeah. Um, so when I feel really stressful or sometimes nervous, um, I go for some exercise. Just go running or yeah, playing football, football again. Yeah. <laughs> yes. yes. To to release this kind of um, yeah, this kind of pressure. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I I can tell you a very uh, interesting uh, memory that uh, the first day when mm. I was. Uh, appointed as a head coach so we have a team talk right so i first time i faced all the players and then uh i i like i think i spent one night to write down everything on the a4 size paper i write everything i want to yeah tell the players that what i think what i want to do and then uh my my hands was shaking like this yeah when i when i was talking to them and they, like... yeah they actually know that I, I was very nervous and um under high pressure yeah but yeah, I think experience can uh, make you be a better person or, or coach. Yeah, now I can, I'm better, but still, yeah, sometimes stressful. Yeah. So during that moment while you are nervous reading out the thing, <laughs> I mean, I said, did any one of them or did any of the players actually approach you? Uh, not like, really. You know, yeah. Should be fine. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think I always say thank you to them because uh, they, they actually know that I'm nervous. And, uh, and especially being the first woman head coach in Hong Kong. So they stay very professional. They even work out or help or do better than before because they want mm. to help me. Yeah, they want to help me to release the pressure. So that's why uh, we suddenly build up a very strong team spirit. Yeah, I think it is quite uh, interesting that just because I'm a woman head coach, if I'm a man or I'm an experienced head coach, Maybe they will just do the normal things. Yeah, they will yeah. think, ah, the coach will tell me what I need to do. But they, they know that I'm new, so they try to do more. So that's why they contribute a lot to the team. Oh, definitely. I mean, it's, yeah. it's always um, a good sign that you have got players behind your back and they really want yeah, to yeah, yeah. you proud and to prove the, the critics yeah, wrong. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, okay, so just um, you yourself, I mean, like with the achievement in Hong Kong, so you have also experienced coaching the youth in um, China as well right now. Yeah. So, I mean, comparing like the Hong Kong youth football and the China youth football. So what are the main difference between the training style mm -hmm. between the both areas? Yeah, it's, yeah, the difference is very, very big and, and large as well. I think um, Singapore sometimes very similar with Hong Kong like uh, a small place and uh, a very high population and we don't have enough space for the football field, right? But um, on the other hand, in China, they're very big and they now try to invest a lot of money on football. That's why they have all the hardware, just like uh, they have a lot of training center, uh, mm. many, many uh, grass football fields. So it is like, I, I cannot find this in Hong Kong, right? So they give me all the hardware, the resource, like um, uh, I mentioned, I want a GPS hardware or I want a foreign, uh, I, I bring an England assistant coach. I have a Spanish conditioning coach. So they mm -hmm. give me everything that I want. And also um, uh, compared with Hong Kong, I feel like I become more professional when I was coaching in China because uh, in China, I can control everything like the timetable because we always stay together from the morning to the night. Uh, so it's like all the way training camp. Mm -hmm. So I can control like the diet, the nutrition, the, the rest, uh, the uh, recovery, everything. But in Hong Kong, um, everyone, they just come from the home and after training yeah. two hours, they go back home. So you, mm -hmm. you never know what they eat in the breakfast. You never know if they have a drink or they have enough rest at the night. So it is like a bit yeah different, and also in China, I feel like the players is the players is very disciplined compared with Hong Kong, but 
However, sometimes they are too disciplined. So they are afraid, um, afraid of like uh, making decisions. So they mm-hmm. always follow your instruction. Uh, you tell them A, B, C, then they will do A, B, C. But in Hong Kong, if you tell them A, B, C, they go D, E, F. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's, it's totally different. But, uh, uh, and also in China, um, the mentality is a bit weak. Yeah, I think it is about, uh, it is about the culture and the education. Yeah, mm-hmm. but in Hong Kong, we have a better education. So all of the players or the girls, boys, they have to go to school every day. But in China, no, they go football every day. Yeah, so, mm-hmm. but however, in Hong Kong, I think uh, the, big, the biggest limitation is we don't have football field. So even the professional team, we just train uh, at the artificial every day. We pay a few hundreds, rent two, three hours. And after and two, three hours... at the same pitch as well. Yeah, yeah. So we, we don't have our training center. So mm. we just go to the home stadium when we have the match. So actually, it's not a home stadium, just a, just a game stadium. Yeah. yeah. But um, in Hong Kong, the players, uh, they are... Um, they're good at uh, adapting something new so they can make decisions or they can uh, uh, try all a uh, lot of um, new things easily yeah it's mm. a bit different from china oh that, that's really a very insightful one cool can, yeah, yeah. yeah now we will slowly invite uh, our our very first panelist uh, miss adelina gomez so um, mm-hmm. definitely i mean adelina has got quite a couple of good questions ready to fire at you <laughs> okay, we have uh, Adelina. Hey, yes, Adelina, the time is yours. Hello, nice to meet you, Adelina. Oh, you got to unmute? Can I unmute? Oh. Yeah. Ah, can okay. you hear me? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Firstly, um, one thing that I first I want to say is um, I think I speak for a lot of people that we have massive um, respect uh, for you and because of your accomplishments throughout the year, being a player or being a coach. And June actually mentioned you being the first, uh, female coach coaching a men's team. I think that is the the benchmark that everybody wants to set as a female, right? So, uh, mad respect for you. Um, just a couple of questions. When did you, uh, when did you start the love of the game? Like you mentioned, you started playing at 15 years old, but when did you start falling in love with it? Um, being a head coach, I think I started being a head coach at maybe 18 years old. Yeah, I took the okay. first coaching license. We call it Youth Football Leader in Hong Kong. Mm-hmm. So we can uh, coach the grassroots level. Yeah, when right. I was still studying in the university. Yeah, and then uh, after the graduation from university, uh, I was very lucky because uh, yeah. AFC, they have a project future scheme. So Hong Kong FA, they recommend me yeah, yeah. to the AFC and then AFC um, assigned me in the B license and C license course in KL as well. So yeah. uh, we went to Korea, we went to Qatar and KL a few times to finish the coaching license. And the most important is I don't have to pay any money <laughs> because <Wow. yeah. laughs> just after graduation, to be honest, I have no money. If oh. I want to get the coaching license, but I cannot pay. But I, yeah. I was lucky that uh, AFC paid everything. And after the B license course, um, and AFC suddenly they have a pilot A license woman coaching course again. Yeah. So they put me in the A license as well. So that's why in, I think in five years, I finished the ABC license in AFC. Yeah. Wow. And uh, at the moment, I was uh, uh, working in a professional club uh, data analysis and then yeah. become assistant coach and then head coach and also I finished um, uh, sport medicine master degree yeah because I know that uh, very interesting when I was uh, having the bachelor degree in university uh, my my major my major is uh, geography so everyone say that well you study geography why you become a football coach football coach yeah yeah so that's why I think I have to do something yeah, to equip myself and uh, have my strength. So that's yeah. why I took the sport medicine master degree, try to have more knowledge to be a coach. Yeah. Wow. So I could, I could just say that you're born to be a coach because everything was just <laughs> laid out for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Lucky, very lucky. 
Well, what is your philosophy as a player and then as a coach? Was there any difference in how you set yourself out to be as a player when you're playing in your playing days as compared to when you are a coach? How do you mm -hmm. express yourself or what do you have set up for yourself as a player and a coach? Yeah, I think um, in my life philosophy, being a player is like uh, easier, right? Because yeah. we just have to enjoy playing football yeah. and yeah. Uh, the coach will tell me, will tell us what we need to do. So uh, the most important is your winning mentality. You yeah. can never give up. So when I was playing football, I just always tell myself when I want to do something better and better, just we, we cannot give up. I think it is like yeah. a very basic mentality for all the yeah. athletes. Yeah, so yeah. it's a very simple philosophy. But once I become a coach, yeah, sometimes um, you will think more, right? Um, so I always think that it is very important. If you fail to plan, you plan to yeah, fail. You plan. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. because you always have to prepare the best yeah. and all prepare for the worst. So yeah. uh, once I become a coach and when I go back to the football field as a player, uh, I always try to anticipate more. Yeah, so I think it helped my coaching as well. And you know that um, being a woman coach is not uh, it's not an easy pathway in yeah. football, right? Yeah, yeah. so uh, sometimes you have to take time, uh, never give up to see what will happen in your life. So yeah. when I face a lot of uh, difficulties in my yeah. football life, um, yeah. just um, try to believe in myself. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, great things always take time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, one of the stories is like um, in Hong Kong football, uh, it's not really stable. So I yeah. work with a uh, few football club, but all the clubs at the end that uh, when the boss say that um, I don't want to pay any money, so the club gone. Yeah. So that's why a few times I was like uh, unemployed. I don't have job, so I want to quit. Yeah, full time as well. Yeah. Before I become uh, a part of Eastern Football Club, I actually download some apps and try to find some new job. Yeah, yeah. just out of football. But I know that uh, when you love something, you can sacrifice more for this thing. Yeah. So that's yeah. why I try to be patient. And luckily that uh, yeah. I, I went to Eastern and get a new job. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think, I think both of you and I are almost in the same boat because, well, I'm also a female coach in Singapore and yeah, we, yeah. and it, I think Hong Kong and Singapore are more or less the same in terms of the female in the football industry. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I think people don't really see the backside of what we do. They always see the front side when we're on the pitch and what we mm -hmm, do. Yeah. And people think that, Oh, it's so easy. It's a walk in a park. And then when yeah, you yeah. start becoming a coach, you're like, Oh my God, there's so much homework to do. Play yeah. analysis, um, session planning and things like that. So I think it's a good insight for, uh, players who want to hang their boots after a couple oh, of years yeah. and they think that, oh, you know what? I think I want to be a coach because I love doing this. And women's football in Singapore is slowly growing. And mm -hmm. then maybe who knows, five to 10 years down the road, we can actually carve this out as a career for um, the young players. So I think that's, that's a really important um, motivation from you being a female coach in such a big industry. Yeah. Um, so we, as I said that, um, has, has, your, has your expectations for yourself changed compared to before you won and then after you won the men's championship? <laughs> has um, it changed? Yeah, definitely. Um, I feel like um, uh, I was, this, I think, few years, but I think like uh, yeah. I have got like 15 years already. So I feel grow up very speedily. So become yeah. a real adult. Yeah, yeah, when we are player, we still uh, enjoy the football and sometimes always yeah. make jokes, make fun, right? But yeah. being a coach, you have to show that you are professional. So you yeah. have to show you are mature. So yeah. everything uh, I do or my behavior on the football field, even <laughs> off the field, yeah. have to be mature. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. it's like a 40, 50 years old woman. Yeah, yeah. so and also... Uh, I feel like um, I experience a lot of up and down, you know, um, as a player or as a coach, especially uh, sometimes you win the games, but 
Also, yeah. you have got the the downstairs and uh, a lot of maybe fail um, in yeah. the games in the lead. Yeah. Especially yeah. Uh, when I have when I was having the ACL year, the Asian oh. Championship, yeah, the Champions yeah. League. We lose a lot of games, and yeah. uh, the last run of the Hong Kong Premier League, we if we get one point, we will be the champion. But we lost the game. So oh it's the last God. game. It's the last game of the, of the league. <laughs> Plus, we are very tired after the Asian Games. Yes. We come back to Hong Kong and we have to play the most important game. Yeah, yeah quite a lot of up and down. But it really um, bring me that um, a lot of knowledge and uh, I've learned a lot. Um, I experienced that uh, I stand on the highest stage in Asia, yeah. but I also being criticized by a lot of people. So be honest that sometimes you can see some people, they point me to like a middle fingers, they say foul language to me or even to my family. Oh, wow. Yeah, uh, face to face or like, you know, I internet is, you can do everything, right? On Facebook, mm. Instagram. Yeah. But yeah. anyway, it is a part of the coach life. And uh, yeah, you're, not you're only right, me, you're right? right? Even you are watching the Premier League, the Manchester United, the Charles, yeah. Liverpool, everyone can criticize them. Yep. So you cannot change what they said, but you can only do your best. Yeah, so yep. that's why I learned that um, uh, I have to be clear to be a coach and uh, stay professional, always stay yeah. humble and hungry yeah. as well. Mm -hmm. I think yeah. it takes a lot to actually block out whatever, all the bad criticism from fans, from people yeah. saying yeah. the worst things about you and still have the right mindset and the right mentality to to motivate your, your your players. So I think it takes a lot. And this is things that people don't see again. So yeah, it's, it's really good. Side. It's really good <laughs> to hear from you. Yeah, exactly. It's the dark side that we have to go through. People only see um, the happy and the fun times when we win championships, we're running around the pitch, but they yeah. don't know the, the work that we put in and the sleepless nights we have because we're so nervous, uh, we're so yeah. stressed out. So um, is there a difference? between coaching males versus coaching females? Because I've, I've only coached, I, I've been doing this for 11 years and I focus a lot mainly on females. So I don't really look into the male aspect of um, coaching, mm -hmm. but is there a difference? Um, uh, what I think, um, the football philosophy is the same, right? Even yeah. you coach a man's or woman's uh, yeah. uh, young guys or, or the, yeah. the other. But um, yeah. um, you you can see the difference that uh, as a woman, woman teams, what I think in Hong Kong, uh, yeah. compared with the men's team, uh, woman is more disciplined. Yeah, they will follow <laughs> your instruction. Yeah, yeah, but they are yeah. more emotional. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're right. They're, they're, they're jealous of who is the first 11 who are on the bench. So it is yeah. not about football, yeah. just about um, the emotion or sometimes the, ment yeah. the mentality is not strong enough. Yeah, especially yeah. in Hong Kong, the women's team still like uh, part-time, right? There are a lot of full-time athletes. Right. So they come to training or they come to the game or come to the Hong Kong team training after school, after work. Yeah. So they are tired. So you know that they are facing quite a lot of difficulties as well. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, when I coach in the professional men's team, because they are full-time athletes, so they can re you can request them to do more. You can be more harsh for them. Yeah, but uh, they also, I think, men they have a stronger mentality. They always want to uh, win. That's why yeah. they will do their best to fight for the first eleven. And even they are on the bench, they are not unhappy, but they will understand that this is professional football. So yeah. if you have a reason, you put them on the bench, so um, they understand. So if the yeah. team wins, they they still happy. But um, sometimes you have to manage that uh, because men sometimes when they face women. They are a bit arrogant, and or they always yeah. think that they are better than you. Because, uh, be honest, that some of the players in my, uh, in Eastern, they are older than me, so they have yeah. more experience than me. So, so this yeah. is the fact I cannot change. But yeah. how you can convince them is you show that you are professional. Um, yeah. you show that your training is fit for them, and you are helping them. So we have the same direction. We want to get the champion. So yeah. they they will build up the trust with you. So uh, it becomes easier if you can win some games with them and convince them that uh, you are doing something good to help them get a better performance. Yeah. Wow. But that's, it's not that's easy exactly, because yeah. 
um, I have few times that some foreign players because we have few foreign in every in every yeah. like Brazilian, Australian. Yeah. So once one time that the um, German guy he fight with a Brazilian guy, and I was like standing. I was because it's like uh, the first period that I become a head coach. I was thinking, yeah. what can I do because uh, <laughs> I cannot fight with them. <laughs> and I cannot say like file language with them, right? Yeah. So they are yeah. they can run faster than me. They fight stronger than me. <laughs> so um, yeah, I have to think like different way to solve this yeah. kind of problem. But yeah. if you have the you have the philosophy or you have the rules for the team, so they they understand. And sometimes the players, uh, you have to be very tough and and uh, harsh. But some of the players that you can just be soft to them. You have yeah. to listen to them. You have to always explain them, like a mother and a son, even yeah. older than <laughs> older than me. But yeah. but that's a kind of like management, right? If you talk yeah. about the philosophy, it's a kind of man management that we have to learn. Yeah, but interesting. Yeah, man and wo wow. woman is is interesting. Yeah, it's yeah it is. man management is definitely one of the <laughs> most tedious and difficult thing to do. Especially so you're, you're advising me to never coach a men's team, is it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. Thank you, you very much, this experience. Experience. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay, okay thank you so, for your uh, answers. Yeah, so before I bring on the next panelist, oh, so uh, Coach Chan, I have one more question, if I may ask, because you did mention saying that you have a lot of high and low during your career. Mm -hmm. So can I ask, can, would you be able to share with us which is actually your lowest point of your career so far? Oh, okay. Um, I think a lot of people they think that the lowest point that is uh when I when I was with the team in the ACL games because we lose like six right. goals, seven goals, eight seven goals. goals. Yeah, yeah. But uh, what I think is I have learned a lot in this period. Yeah, I uh, I got a chance to shake my hand with Scolari, uh, mm. to play with the top team from Japan, Korea, and and China, and be honest, they are really different level. They are much yeah. better and higher than us. So I don't. I, I I was very sad and unhappy that we lose again. But um, I feel like um, I really learn a lot, and it is very important and unforgettable memory in my life. So that's why I think the lowest period in my life is uh, before I went to Eastern. Yeah, that's why I tell you that um, in Hong Kong when I moved to. Uh, from the first cup to the second cup, because the first cup, uh, the boss is, uh, the left the club, so they have no money. And then the second cup, copy again. The boss left the club, and then uh, we don't have the job. So before Eastern, I have, uh, uh, I resign from Southern because um, I have to go KL for the A license call, mm. and they reject to continue my contract because they think uh, I'm not in the team in the club, so um, I should not get any salary in uh, in april and may or june so that's why i don't have job in three months so i, I was thinking to leave football because i think oh my god um uh, i cannot just stay this kind of situation for a long time yeah and to be honest i cannot see any future because this is the first time that the boss left the club and then we don't have the job mm. so that's why i think before i went to eastern is one of my lowest period in the football life I see. Yeah, because I'm almost quit. But well, luckily that I come back. Lucky you didn't. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you, Adelina. So uh, you, next, the next panelist I'm going to bring up uh, will be our Miss Jess Ma. So it's just more there. Hello. Hello. Hi, Coach. Hi, nice to meet you. you. It's so nice to meet you. Do it <laughs> online, but I think we'd have to do, <laughs> we'd, we'd have to make do with it just because it's online right now. I would have yeah, loved to yeah, meet yeah. you face to face and then ask you all of my questions. Because yeah. you're, like, you're such a big inspiration, I think, to a lot of girls around the whole world, not just like within our Asian context, mm -hmm, with mm -hmm. what you've achieved. So let me yeah, just get started you. on my questions. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I think being a female coach wouldn't be very easy considering how it's a very men um like you know most of the coaches are men so have you faced any discrimination because of your gender while you were coaching yeah um i think i'm quite lucky that um i start my career in hong kong 
And I think Hong Kong, the culture is like, uh, we don't really have any discrimination between men and women. I mean, similar with Singapore, right? I have been in Singapore, everything's like just very fair. Yeah, but you know, in Asia, a lot of countries, especially uh, the, the West Asia or the South Asia, they really have a big discrimination like Iran, you know that. So they yeah. really don't have a chance to play football or being a, a woman coach. Mm. So that's why I, I'm lucky that um, I can be an um, assistant coach or head coach in Hong Kong. But I know that a lot of discrimination is happening in Asia. And even when you go to AFC or Fever, uh, you will hear a lot of uh, story about men's and women, women's coach. Um, so for example, that uh, last time in the FIFA conference, I met the head coach of USA women's team. So they win the World Cup, right? But yeah. she also complained a lot that um, her salary is a big difference with the men's team. But you know, in USA, the women's football is actually much better than men's football. But yeah. the salary is still like a big, <laughs> a big difference. Yeah, but I, I think it is uh, one of the elements. So compared with men, I think uh, as a woman coach, our salary still have a gap between mm -hmm. them in the professional football. Yeah, but... Uh, like uh, what I said in the culture, is, it's okay because um, I feel like, um, uh, I don't know how to explain, but you know the difference between uh, equal and fair. So I believe that uh, men's football and women's football, that we have to be fair. But um, it doesn't mean that it has to be equal because um, in the football trend, still is uh, men is the main is the uh, main influence for the football, right? So we yeah. cannot trace like uh, you have one million in men, so you have to pay one million in women. So it's mm. different, but you have to treat us like fairly. Yeah, that's what um, I'm asking for in uh, mm -hmm. in Hong Kong or the other country. Actually, that's a very good point. Like yeah. I didn't think of it that way, but being treated equally and fairly are actually two different things. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Very insightful. Thank you for sharing that. Um, well, my next question would be actually, uh, apart from all the awards that you've actually got, like, you know, I, I mean, we've seen all of the awards, we even heard from our host, what were some of the awards that you have? Um, what was the biggest highlight of your coaching career, apart from all your awards? Uh, what was okay. your biggest takeaway from everything? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so actually, the biggest highlight for me is not about uh, the award. It's about the uh, fail in the ACL because uh, you know the <laughs> ACL for me is really a very very impressive experience. Mm -hmm. um, I couldn't imagine that uh, I can play again with Scorari, and mm -hmm. uh, they have the players that just come from the Premier League, uh, Tottenham, and uh, they have very very high quality players. And when I went to Japan the fans was very um, enthusiastic and they actually gave us a lot of support. And we went to Korea, we faced other culture as well. So that's why when we go China, Korea and Japan, we learn the other football cultures from their countries. Mm -hmm. And especially uh, we lose some games, we concede a lot of goals, but we also yeah. know our strength and our weakness in the football. Mm -hmm. And we understand that oh, Hong Kong football is just so small yeah the world <laughs> is too big so mm -hmm. it let us because in hong kong we were champion already mm -hmm. so you know yeah. the players sometimes think ah oh, i'm good uh we were oh, doing well, yes. right but once yeah. we get out of hong kong everyone know mm -hmm. that we are just very low level and uh we have the uh, uh we, we will feel that hungry because we want mm -hmm. to improve yeah mm -hmm. so that's why this is one of my highlights yeah Oh, I actually admire your courage for being so honest about how you felt about losing. You know, not a lot of people will be very open to telling how they felt oh, when they okay. lost during the competitions. I mean, I don't know about others, but I've never heard someone mm -hmm. speak so highly of their experience losing <laughs> a competition more than winning it. You know what I mean? So I really admire and I look up to you because of that too. Well, um, Thank you. I think another question that I really wanted to ask was, what actually, what really grounds you or humbles you uh, throughout this entire experience and pushes you to strive more and tells you, mm. you know, you still need to go and do more than you achieve more than what you already have. Um, you know? 
I think one of the reasons is uh, I've gone some, some chance to go out of Hong Kong, just mm-hmm. like uh, we have in the ACL. And I took the coaching course in Asia countries, not only mm-hmm. in Hong Kong. Mm-hmm. Um, I took the professional license mm-hmm. in Korea and England. And I have got some chance to go fever to meet some very, yeah. you know, super coaches. So mm-hmm. that's why I know that. And I feel like uh, I'm still very small, even I get mm-hmm. some award. So, um, and also I think like every day I'm still making a lot of mistakes. Yeah. yeah so <laughs> fail, is, fail is always, uh, we, in, in Cantonese, in Chinese, we always say mm-hmm. that uh, fail is the mother of success. So if you don't yeah. have to fail, you, you never get the success. Mm-hmm. So that's why uh, what I have mentioned is you, you say that uh, um, I'm open to talk about my fail, but mm-hmm. um, I think being a coach, we have to be brave to face the challenge, but mm-hmm. also we have to own us to ourselves. We have to accept that we have our weakness and we make yeah. mistakes and we fail on a lot of things. So that's why uh, you can stay humble and you can stay hungry to learn something uh, new. Um, so that's why in these two years when I left Eastern, so mm-hmm. I really strongly decided to leave Hong Kong because I think um, in Hong Kong, I have 10 seasons already, almost 10 seasons. So everything it happened in Hong Kong football, I have seen a few times. So up yeah. and down and it happened again and also it happened again. <laughs> yeah, so, definitely. Yeah, it's pretty much for me. So that's why I try to push myself to get out of the comfort zone and mm. try to learn something new. Be honest, when I go to China, it's not easy because the mm. culture is totally different from Hong Kong. Yeah, so definitely. I have to adapt a lot of new things. But mm-hmm. um, it was a very good experience for me that you work with different mindset people and you try to change their mindset and they try to give you something new. You <laughs> adapt and you absorb. So yeah, it's interesting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, when you open the TV, you watch a lot of high level football then you know that we are still very small. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But thank you yeah. so much for sharing with me all your experiences. Yeah. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. It indeed, was really indeed. nice hearing it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Jasma. <laughs> Vicky, uh, Coach Shan, so uh, just out of curiosity, I'm really very curious. You did mention saying that, uh, I mean, like, because during the ACL, you have played in Korea, Japan, and China. Yeah. So, and I know that uh, I read it somewhere that you openly said that you are actually a big fan of J-League football. Oh, yeah. I really love yeah. Japanese football. Yeah. Um, especially that uh, when I went to Japan uh, a few years ago, I visited their training center. I watched mm-hmm. some trainings. And also uh, because I was the um, uh, match analysis for the AFC Under-16, Under-19 Women's Tournament. So I record a lot of things. And I recognize that uh, so all of us, all of us know that uh, Japanese football is very good, right? So it's like mm. uh, the highest in Asia, yeah. and they play beautiful football. So they not only go for like effective or strong guy, fast guy. They really play Japanese style. So yeah, and also uh, secondly is uh, I really admire and appreciate that uh, they have a very strong mentality. Yeah. So when I watch all the games in Asia. I can only see that Japanese team that uh, Japanese, they are playing with joy. They are happy mm. when they are playing. Yeah, when you look at the other team like China or Korea or the other youth team in the AFC tournament, they are nervous. They are stressful. They are scared to, to make mistakes. They are afraid mm. of uh, the fail. But in, in the Japanese game, they just show that they enjoy the game. They are happy. So that's why if I have got a chance to go to Japan, I would definitely just go and experience their football. Yeah. Definitely. Japan and, uh, is definitely I meet, Yeah, I meet few Japanese uh, professional players in Hong Kong because they come mm-hmm. and play in Hong Kong. And all the way that they are the most professional, yeah, they teach you what is professional. Mm-hmm. So they teach a lot of things to the local players that what they need to do, the discipline, what they have to eat or before, after training, they, they have to do it. Yeah. Mm, okay, good. Thanks for that insight. <laughs> okay, we have our last panelist. Um, okay. So, if I may invite uh, Ms. Danielle. Are you on Danielle? Are you there? Oh, All right. Daniel, hello. I'm hello. Uh, so, thank you for uh, the, your time. It's so great to meet you. 
Uh, so this might not be like the most usual question you might get, but I love reading books and I was just wondering if there was like a book uh, mm-hmm, that mm-hmm. you think had the biggest influence on your career or like yeah. your coaching style and philosophy. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I have a favorite book that um, I can share with you, but it is like, I think, 15 years ago, 10 or 15 years ago, I, I found it. Uh, the name is The Secret. Maybe some of you know that it's a very famous book because it talks about the attraction, the law of attraction. Um, just uh, I explain a little bit is uh, the books tell you the secret that uh, about the laws of the attraction. Um, when you think something positive, the good things will come to you. So this is about your, your belief. Because um, I have a motto for myself is uh, when you believe in something, you see something happen. But if you don't believe in something, you will never see this thing happen in front of you. So I think this book uh, really teach me a lot that uh, we have to believe in ourselves. And uh, when we think a lot of bad things, the best thing will come with us. Yeah, but mm-hmm. if you always think positive, you always think the happy things, then uh, the good things will come to help you to uh, chase your dream and, uh, and uh, help you in your life. Yeah. Mm, that's quite interesting. Uh, so I, I'm a player myself. I currently play for the Singapore national team. And, uh, and it's still a long way to go, but I'm thinking of turning like pro in either Europe or America one day. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I was hoping you would give like a, advice mm-hmm. for or against this like decision. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm very happy to hear from you that as a young player, you have this kind of uh, uh, idea or think because um, a lot of players that they just uh, feel comfortable playing in the local and uh, especially you are already playing in the national team so probably you are the top level in singapore right so uh you should be you ha- you should uh, feel happy in the training and you feel that you're getting to the success but um i think it is very good that you have this kind of mindset because uh, when you get out of uh, uh leave the singapore um definitely you you are out of your comfort zone so that's why I was uh, I mentioned that um, uh, if we want to achieve higher or we want to go uh, uh, to other levels, so we have to push ourselves to leave the comfort zone. Because when you leave Singapore, if you can reach some highest uh, higher level football, you will become more competitive because you are training with the players that who are better than you or maybe all of them better than you. So you will push yourself to be better. Uh, you can play faster football, you can run faster, you can make faster decisions. But if you only stay in local, just like some Hong Kong players, you always train with your friends. Um, uh, you always, uh, you, you're one of the best players in the team. So you don't, have to motiv- you don't have the motivation to push yourself to improve. Yeah, so uh, that's why if you have uh, this idea, I really support and um, always focus on something that are long-term benefit. So instead of the short-term benefit, but you have to anticipate that once you leave Singapore, you will face a lot of uh, challenge and you have to overcome a lot of difficulties like the culture or the, the language, or uh, maybe uh, uh, they don't really give you a lot of chance. You have, you have to be patient. You have to try. You have to try a few, uh, few clubs and get your chance. But yeah, if you have this kind of idea, I think you can do it. Just believe in yourself. So in Singapore, I'm not sure if it's the same in Hong Kong, but in Singapore, mm-hmm. uh, like parents really prioritize studies. So for example, like a lot of Singaporean parents would rather their kids uh, study like medicine or law or a very good uh, like degree for a future yeah. profession. And, but if I were to go overseas to perhaps turn pro one day, I think it would, I have to bridge the gap in level currently yeah. because the level in Singapore isn't that high. So that might mean that I might leave, I might have to leave Singapore at a very young age. So do yeah. you think that is like, that makes sense to leave at a very young age or would it be like um, detrimental to my future if it was? Yeah, too hard. Yeah, that, that makes sense. That makes sense. Um, I have few uh young players that uh they leave Hong Kong when they are 
15, 16 years old. And once they come back to Hong Kong, they really have a very big improvement. Yeah, because when you, be honest, um, when you are younger, you can learn faster. So, yeah. but if you are already like 25 or uh, 27 years old, you are already experienced. So when you are experienced, it's not easy to change your mindset. But if you are still young, you, are, you will be very open mind and you are easy to learn something new. Yeah, but, and also I think it is a very important move for you that if you can live younger and you can become a professional player in the future because you can become a role model for the Singapore women's football. And uh, the, mm -hmm. uh, the next generation, they can see the pathway. Oh, they can see, oh, uh, we have the role model that should leave uh, Singapore and she she take the other's education and football in the other's country and she she's getting to be success and coming back. So mm -hmm. I think it is a very good story and motivation, positive um, uh, role model to Singapore women's football. Yep. Yeah, but uh, for example, like in the men's side, I'm not sure about the women's side, only about like 1% mm -hmm. of these young uh, people uh, uh, athletes actually make it mm. to the professional level. Yeah, yeah. So semi -ho think, semi -ho like, yeah. Yeah, so what what do you what would you say to the other like ninety nine percent who don't make it uh, as like a, a career? Yeah. Um to be honest, I think it is really depends on your personality and your mentality, right? If you really want something, you can sacrifice everything. But if you don't really want to get something, you want to stay comfortable and stay happy in Singapore. So like the 99%, maybe they scare or they feel like, oh, now it is enough for me to just enjoy football as a part-time player. So they don't want to leave. But if you can show that, or oh, the 1% is getting success, maybe after five years, we'll have 5%. After 10 years, we'll have 10%. So I can share uh, some story from Hong Kong that uh, I have some friends who is around 25 years old, they still have a dream to play in Europe. So I have a player that just come back from uh, uh, East Europe. I forgot the country name. So actually they speak not English, it's other, another language. And she just played there, you know, the virus problem. So she, is get, uh, she was getting a lot of delays for the flight and she finally get to the champions team of this country. And she played one month football there and they got two champions. Uh, but now the club just uh, cannot continue her country, uh, her, her contract. So she's coming back next week. But uh, I think that she has got a very, very wonderful experience, even if it is just one month. So uh, yes. she has no regret that she leave Hong Kong. She sacrificed her job, her career, her family, and especially now the virus is very serious, so no one is willing to go to the flight or go to other country. But she sacrificed everything, but she get what she wants. So um, I think uh, when you decide to do something, just no regret and no retreat. Just um, just try because you are still young. Yeah, if you are thirty years old like me, I I will not say this to you. But yeah, but you're still young. You have a lot of time and. Uh, chance to uh, develop yourself yeah so just sometimes uh be brave yeah and um just go for your dream yeah cool. thank you thank cool. you for so that. i mean as in like we have actually shared quite a lot on uh, coaching the professional team so i'm actually pretty uh, curious as well so it's like what what is actually the biggest difference between uh, coaching uh the players from the coaching academy academy oh, and yeah. versus the professional team i think mm. probably this is one of the questions because yeah 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 it's a good question uh yeah so again for me the football philosophy is the same but when you coach different players different culture uh something that you have to change right uh so when you coach the academy the young players um i think the most important is the development so you cannot look for the result immediately because you know uh, when they are young they can change uh, a lot in a very short period so you have to develop them you have to give them trust you have to uh, give them uh, some new training new mindset 
But in professional teams, to be honest, uh, results always come first. You mm-hmm. really don't have the time to develop the player. Because if you lose one game, the boss will ask you why. Yeah. And the fans will complain that you lose again. So it is really different priority, result and development, right? And uh, in professional team, you can talk more about tactics because they are all uh, mature players. So they understand football. What you need to do is uh, change uh, the tactics and sometimes change their mindset. But, um, and also control their emotions because they are arrogant sometimes. Yeah, yeah, but in academy, they are like more simple and easy. It's like just a, a new paper. You can write down everything on the paper. Um, so I think not only tactics, but also like technique or physical are more important. And in the young or new generation, I think the mentality is getting weak. So uh, yeah, that's why in academy, I do more on, on the motivation. I try to, mm. uh, yeah. Uh, let them have a stronger winning mentality. Yeah, so when I was coaching in China, um, I give them a lot of freedom to discuss and do the match analysis and uh, write down their target, their dream, and uh, we have some evaluation to let them know that uh, we all support them to develop that themselves and also trace that the dream. Yeah. Cool. Thank you very much. Thank so you. I'd like to thank Daniel as well. So uh, perhaps yeah, I, yeah. Uh, Very good question I'd like to her. take this opportunity to thank all our panelists over here as well. Adelina, uh, Jasma, Daniel, thank you very much. So I'm putting all of you all good, uh, on the screen together. So, yep, I can say a big thank, thank you. you everybody. Thanks for thank the question. You. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. So I will hope to see you in person very soon again. Yeah, I yeah. wish I can come to Singapore. Definitely, definitely. <laughs> we'll, we'll definitely see you uh, here in Singapore once again. If not, we'll go over to Hong Kong. Okay, okay. <laughs> Promise. Cool. Okay, yeah. cool. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, ladies. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for having thank us. Thank you.